In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A lesson from St. John's Gospel, chapter 18. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. You've seen this scene before, I'm quite sure. One who has been arrested, bound, led away by the officers, or, or after the trial, after he has been pronounced guilty, the family and friends crying out, He didn't do it. He didn't deserve it. What of this man arrested and bound before us in John chapter 18? It's easy to gloss over and make light of it. But these Jewish leaders who long had been plotting for this moment, how do you think they treated him at this point? Dr. Luther comments that if Jesus were a mere man, would that still not be enough? Would it still not be enough for you to stand in love and in wonder and in awe? More than mere man, of course, this is Jesus, bound and arrested and led to death. And we confess with the Lenten hymn, "'Tis I who should be smitten." My doom should here be written, bound hand and foot in hell, the fetters and the scourging, the floods around you surging, tis I who have deserved them well. Repent. What have you done that they should treat the Son of God in such a way? Repent. What have you done that the Lord of life should be arrested, bound, and led before the high priest. St. John places this between Peter's bold and foolish move with the sword when he cut off Malchus's ear, and between Peter's denial. This Jesus is bound and arrested and led away for both, for moments of arrogance and brashness, for moments of weakness, lack of trust, both of those displaying the sinful heart that is curved in on itself, not willing to let God be God. And where is this Jesus led? He is led to those who of all people should have known better. He is led to those who sit in Aaron's seat, the high priest. Jesus, our great mediator, our high priest, led before those who have made a mockery of the holy priesthood. Jesus is led before Caiaphas, the high priest for that year. Caiaphas, who had once advised the Jewish religious leaders as they were plotting to kill Jesus, this is John chapter 11, it would be good if one man died for the people. And his underhanded, cunning way of dealing with what he feared would lead to a revolt, what he feared would lead to the Romans coming in and taking over his rule and his people. Caiaphas had no clue how right he was. It would be good, expedient, advantageous, if one man died for the people. How good it is, we confess, that one man did die for the people, for your forgiveness, for a people like you, bound and delivered, handed over for you, that you would be free free today, free even though at this very moment you may suffer injustice, cruelty, free in Christ to trust in him who trusted perfectly his Father's will, free to trust in the God who works out all things for his children's good and to his unending glory free to trust, free to speak the name of him, arrested, bound, led before the high priest, your great high priest, whose blood atones and still pleads your case.
free to live for the one man, the God-man Christ Jesus, dead, resurrected, for the people, for you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your willingness to be arrested, bound, led away before those who made a mockery of the priesthood. Thank you for being our high priest, continuing to make intercession for us. Give us strength, Lord Jesus, to endure, strength to bear up in times of suffering, strength to forgive. For thy name's sake, amen.